Hello and welcome everyone to our horror cinema podcast. Today it's The Brides of Dracula, which actually has very little Dracula in it. Although it's about one of his vassals slash cult followers. Because the thing about this story is that Baron Meinster, the main vampire of the movie, is apparently a lesser vassal. Well, he's basically a feudal vassal to Dracula. Which, it would make sense that Dracula would actually have an infected vassal and baron. So, at least in the context of the movie universe. In the novel, Dracula could not stand the idea of making a male vampire for fear of being usurped by a, another male. That said, Meinster is a very insular person. He's not really the sort to of... He's a bit sniveling. He's not the sort to have usurped Dracula. That said, he's a pretty crafty villain. But he's aided by the fact that there are some pretty spineless people in the village or at the school. And but this story and this story focuses on a Parisian uh, femme who's well a a young woman from Paris who's called Marianne Danielle, and she is heading to a local school in the Eastern European parts to teach various subjects as a student teacher with the goal of one day becoming a full-fledged school teacher. She ends up arriving in the local town that is nearest to Baron Meinster's castle. Her coach is paid off to take off without her by the by a lackey of the local Baroness Dowager, who has been feeding her son various young women, but it's getting a little heated in the village. So the idea of a beautiful young woman from Paris who has no ties to anyone coming along is ideal that said the local innkeeper wants to initially chuck her out onto the street because screw this he's not getting involved his wife though is if a more kindly man and sees it as okay we're just going to call up our own coach and we're gonna we're gonna hurry the little the young lady along on their her way ourselves but the Baroness arrives and, well, puts a pin in that idea. She is creepy and played brilliantly. She's played by Martita Hunt, who was more a stage actress, but she's a genius at acting. She's a brilliant actress. I made the comparison between her and uh, <clears throat> Christopher Lee. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing with her is... You take one look at her and you don't want to trust her. It's very hard to pity this woman because she is that creepy and that cruel. She escorts, well I say escort, but more forces Marianne to come along with her. Kidnapping the young woman to her castle. With Marianne initially trusting in her. But you can start to see from scene to scene just how rapidly all trust fades. And where there's... A point when she goes down for dinner that you can kind of pinpoint when she starts to realize she is not a guest, but a prisoner. She tries to stress the idea that she is a guest, but that idea is shot down by her hostesses, the former nursemaid of Baron Meinster and Baroness Meinster. She still tries to be polite and civil to them, realizing her life is, quite frankly, literally in their hands she decides that if the baroness is this um untrustworthy it's best to set free the son whom she was told was a monster the son turns out to be yes a monster marianne frightened by him and by the screams of the baroness in the baron's room and by the creepy behavior of greta the servant woman takes off into the night probably Marianne is probably one of the smartest and most most resourceful 
horror queens, screen queen, queen characters of all times. And it's hard to argue with her logic here of, ah, screw it, I'm, if I stay in the castle, I'm screwed. I'm just going to take off into the woods. She runs till she passes out with Van Helsing being the character who runs into her on the road, finding her unconscious. He revives her and escorts her to the local town. And you can see that he's rapidly growing fond of her, holding her very close, hearing her story out, never doubting it, and being ever most courteous and insisting that she travel with him and that she stay close at all times. There's something very courtly and gentlemanly about his behavior. He's very much in this movie a chivalrous knight with his um, uh, lady most fair, well, queen of love of sorts, like his lady. Um, I stumbled there because I know the French terms and I was trying to find them in English. The local townsfolk, though, are quickly struck by the free Mindster, in that one girl quickly falls ill and dies due to him. Van Helsing examines the corpse, discovers what's happened, and teams up with a local priest. And together, they try to put an end to Mindster's reign of terror. Helsing does end up, however, escorting in the meantime Malian to the local school, where the head of the school makes it very clear he has no problem. Um, selling Marianne physically to Van Helsing in return for Helsing's favor. With the man's wife being no less invested in such an idea. In fact, she's almost... She actually seems even creepier in that she's turned on by that behavior. Like, by the idea of selling the young woman to either Van Helsing or Baron Meinster. Now, Van Helsing, when he leaves the school, leaves with instructions that Malian is to be left with no man at all, whether he's noble or not. And the couple soon immediately break that promise, deciding to sell her to Meinster, despite Malian not wanting that, at least in her gaze. And she's quickly hypnotized and all but mind-controlled. And you could see in a few scenes her eyes darting and her eyes filled with panic, and it's just, any, any close observer could realize that she's not consenting to this. But Meinster claims that they are to be engaged, as he's never seen a beauty like Marianne. Honestly, she's probably the most beautiful hammer babe, so to speak, there's ever been. And the couple, though, who run the school are keen to sell her off to the highest bidder. But they try not to at first tell Helsing, but the wife ends up letting the beans spill. In turn, though, one of their other student teachers gets struck down by Meinster, with Helsing finding that out after he's purified, I guess you could say, the Baroness Dowager, or what was the Baroness Dowager. And... From there, Helsing tries to extract as much information as possible without giving any info over. That said, the young lady is chased off by Helsing, and Helsing has to then try to track down Meinster and tracks him down to the old mill, thanks to Marianne, after Helsing shakes her out of the mind control, and she... She ends up divulging the information, ha struggling against the hypnotism. And it's a really good scene that harkens back to the novel when Mina's trying to shake off the mind control of Dracula in a few scenes because she agreed to be hypnotized. And you just kind of have her connected to both Van Helsing and Dracula. And it's really, really interesting in the novel seeing her waver and struggle against the control of the Count, but still finding a way to screw him over and stay true to the heroes. Marianne, though, is kind of in this position. Now, as for Van Helsing, he ends up bitten by Meinster and, quite frankly, just finds the coolest way and the most painful way to, to purify himself of the 
vampire bite. He scorches his neck where the bite took place, then pours holy water on it, which somehow heals him of the impurity of the bite, which does kind of make some sense if you think about it from a theological angle. But then Meinster, meanwhile, having left to go grab Marianne, manages to grab her before she can pull back on because she was getting dressed to go to bed. He grabs her before she can put the crucifix back on her neck, or around her neck, I mean, and drags her back to the mill to try and basically turn her into a vampire in front of, Dra of Van Helsing, excuse me there, in front of Helsing because he wants to basically taint her in front of the man she loves. And he doesn't quite count on Van Helsing having been preparing himself for this, who then proceeds to scorch his eyes out with holy water after he tries to mind control Maudian once more. And Maudian and Van Helsing go to escape. Meister sets the building on fire, trapping his own brides. Not that he cares. Van Helsing then takes them down with the cross shape of the windmill part of the mill, which is pretty interesting. Then he goes down and finishes the job, and we are left with the knowledge that he'll probably ride off into the sunset with his Lady Fair. So this is probably the most romantic of the Dra Hammer Dracula movies. Like There are others where there are romantic pairings, but none of them feel quite as true or as romantic or beautiful as this one. No other female lead quite ca manages to measure up to Mina from the novel like Marianne does. Nor is there any hammer babe, so to speak, who's as beautiful as Yvonne Montal, who plays the character of Marianne Daniel. And no male lead quite measures up at any point to the heroism, the dashing uh, gentlemanliness and piety and greatness of Van Helsing, played by, of course, Peter Cushing. In this movie, it's probably the... It, there's also almost no villain who measures up to Baron Meinster in some ways. In some ways. it. Although Dracula a few times measures up quite well. This movie is probably the best of all the Hammer movies. I'm going to rate it a four. I'm, I'm right on board with that. A four. This is one of my favorite movies of all times. We can't rate it any higher. It's perfect. There's... It's hard to name a single horror movie that can stand up to it. I don't think there is any. The hero is perfect in Van Helsing. The female lead is plucky and resourceful and beautiful and dashing in her own way. She's perfect. The villain is perfect. The horror is perfect. But there are supporting characters like the priest or the innkeeper's wife who are heroic in their own smaller, no less impressive ways. But then you got some of the supporting characters who are almost villains in their own right, such as the innkeeper or the school head and his wife. But then you got some victims who are just so pitiable, like Marianne's one school teacher friend, or heck, even the school laborer slash stable master or janitor. He seems like a really nice guy with a quirky sense of humor, but he dies. And you actually kind of feel bad when he dies, going, he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. So this is a perfect movie. You want horror? Go and learn from this movie. It's not over-the-top slasher. Van Kevin's. But it's more cerebral. It's more psychological. Yeah, because the first 25 to 30 minutes or so, you have a battle of wits between Marianne, the Baroness Dowager, and Meinster. With the three of them, you could see them basically dueling with each other, with basically all of them trying to come out on top and trying to survive against each other. But then you have later, it's Van Helsing and Marianne trying to wage their own battle against Meinster using their wits. And you actually feel bad for Marianne when she's basically mind-controlled and mm -hmm. you've got the her basically trying to communicate in subtle ways and with her eyes to the main couple who run the school. You know, like, free me. This is not what I want. And them, 
cackling and already counting their coin. It's just, you wonder if they're running a school or a brothel. And it's just so horrible. I, on that note, I couldn't help but think of, I know I mentioned the colors that she wore in at first. The white and the pastel pink. Yeah, which are colors of purity and femininity. Basically, but, she's a virginal girl. And you contrast there. that to not just Baroness... Uh, the Baroness's dark colors and purple. You also have, when Marianne is under possession, she also wears such darker clothing. Well, she wears crimson red, which is a the same color as blood and passion. And that's the color she's wearing when Van Helsing saves her. And... You've got Van Helsing who's dressed in dark pants and a white shirt. But he also wears his usually, I think, gray or dark colored jacket. So there was a lot of attention to detail. Yeah. In the decor, in every building and scene, and in the dress of the characters. So and their arraignment. So that this movie just does not leave a single detail out. It and if you enjoy this movie, you should probably also get the novel, as there's a brilliant novel. We might make that the next year's horror book club podcast focus, because it's a really good novel, though it's not as great as, say, the original Dracula novel or the Frankenstein novel, but it's perfect in its own right. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button. And have a great horror-filled night.